Wylock here, welcome back. Let's get back to our bread and butter. We've done a couple of different styles of tile now, but what if you want to do something in a very clean or man-made environment that's not decrepit? Well, I call that a castle tile, but in any event, let's look at some ways to do it. We begin, as always, with the foundations. As you'll recall, everything depends on how you are constructing the walls. These tiles are very easy. The foundations are always two and a half light by two and a half light. Now cut some walls. Going against the corrugation, as shown here, cut strips that are 3 16 of an inch thick. Attach these walls to the foundation, double high. If the tile has a corner, then, for maximum strength, ensure that you overlap the second layer at the corner. Apply the usual thin corrugation cover. For sides that include the end of a wall, I like to glue on a 3 quarter inch wide strip and then cut it down in place. This is a lot easier than measuring and cutting an L shape and is also guaranteed to give a smooth fit because let's face it, these walls are not going to be laser perfect. Get out your dollar store foam board and cut a long strip two and a half inches wide. On this strip, measure out one and a quarter inch intervals. Score with your crafting knife. and then chase the score with a mechanical pencil to chamfer the edges and widen the groove. You've made a one and a quarter inch grid. Cut out two by two segments. Now the world is your oyster, texture these however you want. I'll show you three ideas. The first is what I did for my main set of tiles about two years ago. Take a toothbrush and jab at the foam to give it a beaten stone look. Take a mechanical pencil and, without scoring first, carve out erratic cracks. Method 2. This is similar to the tavern tiles back in episode 10 in that we'll have a repeating checkerboard. Simply score and widen a straight line to cut each square in half, but alternate the direction that you do this. As with episode 10, it is very important that you pick a convention and stick to it forever. So for example, you might say that as you're looking at the tile, the lower right square should always be cut in half in the direction perpendicular to yourself, as shown here. Method 3. This is similar to how we've done cobblestone before. Using your fresh, sharp crafting knife, score some erratic cobblestone and then chase with a mechanical pencil.
Now attaching these is pretty easy. If there are no walls or it's a field tile, then just hot glue it on. If there are walls, simply trim off a quarter inch in the appropriate direction, or a half inch if it's a hallway or a dead end. You get the idea. And just to reiterate, here are those checkerboard tiles. Note the alternating pattern is always maintained no matter which way the tiles are rotated, as long as you stuck to your convention earlier on. Paint them however you like. Here's some ideas. Sponge with medium gray as we've done many times before. Do all surfaces. With your lighter gray, dry brush the squares only. For all other surfaces, do not dry brush, but rather stipple. I use a terrible, firm, coarse brush. Really jab at your palette to splay out the bristles. I like stippling over sponging here because it gives a much finer speckle, more like granite and less like rock. Lastly, let's draw some bricks. On the outside of each wall, draw two lines to cut it into thirds. Just eyeball about a quarter inch each and draw the line with a ruler and a black sharpie. Now draw some vertical lines at random spacing to make a stacked brick look. At the top of the wall, continue these vertical lines over the top and down the interior of the wall. This, surprisingly, goes miles toward really selling the wall as a brick wall. Alright, and here's some in-play examples with some miniatures for scale. You can see what I was talking about with the uh, stippling versus sponging. You get a much finer speckle, which is sort of more like granite. And here's the other design style that we tried. Okay, and here's the castle tiles which you've seen in previous episodes, but we didn't paint up here. We stopped once we textured the foam. Um, this is my current set. I have, I don't know, 100 pieces to it, so I didn't feel the need to make any more for this video, but here's an example of how the door attaches. This clip is the same as we did for secret doors several episodes back, but you can see that the clip I actually did decorate up to look just like the wall so that it blends in nicely when it's clipped on. And as we've always talked about, a one inch miniature can still fit on those spaces that are shared with the door. Here's an example of a secret door, again with a custom clip for these tiles. And here's an example of a large room, so instead of using four corners, I just pre-made the whole big room. I don't do this much anymore, but that's how I used to make them, because I always end up with a 2x2 two two room or a 3x3 three three room in my dungeons. 
Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the three styles that we've tried. Notice that the one with the cracks in it, that my, my main set, pops much more and that's because I dry brushed with white instead of a light gray. And here I just tried this as a, an experiment. Um, these look kind of monotonous and so to break it up a little bit I thought I'd try my favorite color, slate gray, on just the squares. Gives them a different look than the walls and helps them pop nicer. The paint is still wet here so it doesn't look great but this is one option to consider. So anyway, I am Wylock. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.